Okay, today I am going to prove the hook length formula. First, some notation. We will be using Cauchy's uh, formula for the Schur function that is in terms of certain determinants and this notation is for those determinants. So, if you have any um, integer vector by this I mean uh, a vector whose uh, coordinates are all non-negative integers then um, let us say then I will introduce this determinant a subscript uh, let us call this alpha a subscript alpha to be the determinant x 1 to the power alpha 1 x 2 to the power alpha 1 x n to the power alpha 1 x whoops x 1 to the power alpha 2 x 2 to the power alpha 2 x n to the power alpha 2 and so on x 1 to the power alpha n x 2 to the power alpha n x n to the power alpha n. Right. So, it is a generalization of the van der Mond. If you take delta to be the vector n minus 1, n minus 2 down to 1, then A delta is the van der Mond determinant, which is the product of i less than j x i minus x j. Now, oh yeah, thank you. The last one here should be zero. It's an n, n vector. That's very important. And Cauchy uh, gave a formula for Schur functions. Well, actually, he defined them like this. which they were called Schur functions later on, but I think uh, they may they have appeared in Cauchy's work before um, Schur, um, Schur showed their connections with the representations of uh, GLN. So, for each partition let us say that lambda is a partition of n, then for each partition of n uh, the Schur function a s lambda is a lambda plus delta by a delta. You can just take this as a definition and it is not very difficult to check that this is actually a polynomial and it is symmetric in the variables x 1, x 2, x n because both the numerator and denominator being determinants are anti-symmetric in the variables um, x 1 to x and if you interchange two variables um, you will be interchanging two uh, rows of this determinant. So, the numerator will change sign and the denominator will change sign. So, the quotient will not change sign at all. So, that is a symmetric function. Now, um, Now, suppose you have a function f which you can expand in terms of Schur functions. Okay, so, there is a theorem which says that all symmetric functions can be uh, expanded in this way. Yes? Given a partition, how do you get an interval? Oh, yeah. So, this uh, partition lambda here is um, lambda 1 lambda n let us just assume it has um, n parts you can add zeros to the end of your partition. It is a partition of n, but we will add as many zeros to make it have n parts it cannot have more than n parts anyway and um, lambda plus delta therefore is uh, lambda 1 plus n minus 1 lambda 2 plus n minus 2 all the way to lambda n plus 0. So, here lambda 1 is greater than or equal to lambda 2 and so on and here we will have that these are 
in strictly decreasing order because you are adding numbers which are in strictly decreasing order. Okay, so now, um, now I am going to describe a way to read off these coefficients from the expansion. So, what you can do is um, you just write um, F A delta. Now, by this formula, you get this is lambda C lambda A lambda plus delta. Okay. Now, I want to somehow from here read off C lambda and um, let us just look at this determinant in order to do that. So, what is this A lambda plus delta? I will just do it around here. A lambda plus delta is the sum over all permutations in S n um, sign of the permutation it is plus or minus 1 and then um, x 1 to the which f f is some uh, symmetric function which is uh, which I have written as a linear combination of um, sure functions. These are the coefficients. So, these are just uh, elements in your field and these are the sure functions themselves. So, this, this is just a linear combination of sure functions. Yeah, so maybe I will sum over let us say all partitions of degree n. Then this would be a homogeneous polynomial of degree n and every homogeneous polynomial of degree n has an expansion in terms of sure functions. So, this is that expansion. Yeah, let us say this is a homogeneous symmetric polynomial of degree n and suppose you can. So, then you can always write it as a linear combination of sure functions where lambda runs over all partitions of n and we want to find a write this as a sum of uh, over permutations and what should I put here um, lambda uh, w 1 plus n minus w 1 x 2 to the lambda w 2 plus n minus w 2 and so on. right? So, it is a sum of these monomials. Now, these uh, powers here are permutations of this original set of powers. So, there is only one monomial where the power of x 1 is strictly greater than the power of x 2 which is strictly greater than the power of x 3 in this sum. Because the moment you do any non-trivial permutation here, you will have at least uh, one um, place where this will be out of order, it will not be decreasing. right? So, there is exactly one monomial in the sum which has strictly decreasing uh, powers of that the power of x 1 is strictly greater than the power of x 2 which is strictly greater than the power of x 3. So, I will call that a strictly decreasing monomial this has exactly one strictly decreasing monomial. And what is that monomial? that monomial is what I will call x to the power lambda plus delta which just means x 1 to the power lambda 1 plus delta 1 x 2 to the power lambda 2 plus delta 2 x 1. So, that tells you how to um, read off uh, coefficients of strictly decreasing monomials from here. So, um, so the coefficient of So, let us ask what is the coefficient of x raised to lambda plus delta in f a delta. Well, this is a strictly decreasing monomial. So, it um, and each of these terms has only one strictly decreasing monomial and there is only one term with the strictly decreasing monomial x to the power lambda plus delta. 
so this is equal to c lambda right so you can extract the coefficients in the expansion of something as a linear combination of sure functions by multiplying it by the van der Mond determinant and looking at uh, the coefficient of a certain strictly decreasing monomial. So that is a trick and um, this trick together with um, um, formula for expanding uh, power sum symmetric functions in terms of uh, sure functions will give us what is called the Frobenius character formula. So that other expansion is called the Murnahan Nakayama rule. Let me just remind you about this. I won't prove this here. It's been proved in some of my earlier lectures, which are uh, online. Anyway, it's a standard result. So let me just remind you firstly what is a power sum symmetric function. So you define P n to be uh, well let us say P k to be x 1 to the k plus x 2 to the k plus x n to the power k. And you define for a partition mu, suppose you have a partition mu which is mu 1, mu 2 and so on, then you define P mu to be P mu 1, P mu 2, P mu, well okay, so just the product of these things. So just a uh, product of these kinds of polynomials that is called the power sum symmetric function corresponding to the partition mu. If mu is a partition of n then this will be homogeneous of degree n. And the Murnahan Nakayama rule is an expansion of this in terms of um, sure functions. Says that P mu is equal to summation sum over all. So let mu be a partition of n, then this is a sum over all partitions of n of the character of the representation of S n indexed by the partition lambda evaluated at a conjugacy class indexed by mu. This conjugacy class consists of those partitions whose cycle decomposition has shape mu. So that is the Murnahan Nakayama rule. In this lecture we are just going to take this as a black box, I am not going to prove it. Okay, but I hope the at least the statement is clear. These are the power sum symmetric functions. You, you try to expand them in terms of sure functions and the coefficients turn out to be the character values of the symmetric group. So if you put this together with the earlier result about um, uh, reading off C lambdas from F, it gives us a nice uh, formula for reading off the character values of the symmetric group from certain symmetric functions and that is called the Frobenius character formula. What does the Frobenius character formula say? It says that the value of the lambda irreducible representation of S n at the muth conjugacy class is equal to the coefficient of x, the mon strictly decreasing monomial x to the lambda plus delta in p mu a delta. Just follows from what I have said before. And now I am going to show how to use this character formula to um, get what is called the hook length formula which gives the dimension of the lambda uh, irreducible representation of the symmetric group or what is the same thing the um, number of standard young tableau of shape lambda. Okay, this is not a combinatorial proof it is using all the representation theory of symmetric groups. There are combinatorial uh, proofs as well. 
here lambda everything is a partition of n lambda is a partition of n mu is a partition of n so that sum is over lambda partition of n so here this sum is over lambda partition of n. Well, um, so the transpose of the character table is um, probably related to its inverse by some simple manipulation. Okay, I'm getting some nice symmetric, special kind of symmetric function on the left hand side. Oh, uh, I don't know. Okay, so that's that's the Frobenius character formula. Okay, now let us come to the, um, so we want to just compute the value of this character at the uh, identity element of the symmetric group. So we want to compute dimension of V lambda which is equal to chi lambda at what is the cycle decomposition of the identity? It's just 1 to 1, 1, 1, 1, n times. So, what we get is we will call that um, f lambda, it is the number of standard Young tableau of shape lambda. So, what we get is f lambda is equal to um, coefficient of x to the power lambda plus delta in x1 plus xn to the power n e delta. So, we just need to do this, we just need to compute the coefficient of f lambda in uh, or coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta in this polynomial. This is the van der Mond determinant if you want just remind you this is a polynomial in n variables alternating polynomial and this is just uh, you can expand it using a multinomial expansion. Right. So, that is that is the program that we have. The Frobenius actually gave a nice expression for this uh, calculation which I will do on the way to getting the hook length formula. So, I will call that the Frobenius dimension formula. Frobenius dimension formula. This says that f lambda is equal to n factorial over product i goes from 1 to n lambda i plus n minus i factorial and then the van der Mond determinant a delta evaluated at certain integers basically lambda plus delta. That is the Frobenius dimension formula. So we want to deduce this from um, what we just wrote down that uh, this is actually the coefficient of the um, monomial x to the lambda plus delta in uh, the product of x1 plus x2 plus xn to the power n a delta. 
yeah, it needs to be proved, it is not obvious. So, we want to deduce this from this and it is not obvious at all. In fact, uh, the argument I am going to give Vishwanath helped me to sort it out. So, you could try taking derivatives which is what I tried at first and uh, you could just do it somewhat more directly. So, let us do that. Yeah, so here we are seeing an n factorial and here we are seeing some product of factorials. So, that looks like a multinomial expansion except that these things do not quite add up to n, they add up to n plus n choose 2. So, this is not, yeah, so there is some more stuff going on. So, this is a very nice uh, calculation. Let us just start with this polynomial x 1 plus x 2 plus x n to the power n and then I have uh, a delta x 1 x n. Well, I can expand it out and I can write it as firstly sum over all um, alpha where alpha will be running over all um, vectors with non-negative integer coefficients whose entries add up to n. Um, this is from the multinomial expansion of this thing n factorial over alpha. Well, let me just, I um, will also be expanding out this determinant. So, that will give me a sum over all permutations w and s n. And what should I put here? So, I will have this uh, multinomial coefficient n factorial over alpha 1 factorial dot 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 um, up to alpha n factorial and then I will have the sign and then I will have x 1 to the um, Right. So, I will have x 1 to the power, um, yeah. So, here I will have x 1 to the power alpha 1, x 2 to the power alpha 2, and there I will have just this is a delta. So, alpha 1 plus delta w 1, that is just w 1 minus 1, x 2 alpha 2 plus delta w 2. Um, x n alpha n plus delta no so here um, w i is i minus 1 uh, w i uh, delta w i is w i minus 1 so this these will be between range from 0 to n minus 1 but now they are all uh, um, scrambled up that is what we want and um, what is the coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta in this. So, if we want the uh, coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta we just need to pick out those sums some ends here where um, these things are this is um, lambda 1 plus delta 1 this is lambda 2 plus delta 2 and so on. So, um, the coefficient of x to the lambda plus delta in this is sum over all alpha. Now, there will be a restriction on this alpha sum over all w in S n and then you will have n factorial over alpha 1 factorial alpha n factorial and then you just have epsilon w and now the sum is over uh, those alpha of course the alphas need to be non negative integers and they need to add up to n but you also need to have that alpha i plus delta w i is equal to lambda i 
plus delta i, only those ones. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll think about that. Okay. No. So now, um, ah, yes, I'm going to pull out a factor out of a hat. This is actually a factor that comes up in the hook length formula, which I perhaps should have stated earlier, but. Um, um, so, so you take this thing and it is a sum over this weird set, these, these, there are these constraints and then there is the non-negativity constraints for the alpha is as well. And what you do is you multiply and divide this by um, a certain factor, multiply and divide by product i goes from 1 to n uh, lambda i plus delta i factor. This is a factor that appears in the denominator of the hook length formula. So, we will introduce it here, but the nice thing about this is that uh, when we see what cancellations occur between these things and these things, we get nice, nice expressions which then will allow us to interpret things in terms of hook lengths. Right. This is a constraint on alphas and w's and in fact, um, once you know what w is, it completely determines what alpha is and vice versa. So, this is really a um, sum over one of them where the other is determined by it. If you know w, then you know alpha because you can solve alpha is lambda i plus delta i minus delta w i. And if you know alpha you also know w, but not every alpha will give you a, a permutation. Okay, so, let us put in this factor up there and down there. So, I get um, f lambda is equal to um, yeah, so how do I explain where this factor uh, comes from? It is only because um, this is what appears in the hook length formula. I do not have a good, like, good explanation for that. So, I should have probably written down the hook length formula at the beginning of the lecture and then. Uh, so something comes in the determinant form at this lesson time. Oh, um, oh yeah. So sorry, this is actually just this uh, factor. Yes, there. Yeah. Know that. Yeah, yeah. Not even in the hook. It comes up right here in the Frobenius yeah, dimension. Know that this, then, uh, right. So once you know this, you know to multiply and divide by that. This formula actually appears in one of Frobenius's papers. We can look it up. So, what you get is this n factorial divided by product lambda i plus delta i factorial, then summation alpha, summation w in S n and let me make some more space here. What do I want? I I want to put this back in the numerator. Of course, I have this epsilon w and then I have product i goes from 1 to n lambda i plus delta i factorial and we must not forget, uh, well, I have already taken the product here, our old friends alpha i factorial. Okay, now that is a different uh, a ratio of factorials and um, hopefully we can um, uh, just uh, divide it and take the thing. So, beg your pardon? So, 
So, I can write this as um, yeah. As I um, mentioned earlier, this alpha and w determine each other, but then there is this uh, horrible condition that all the alpha is need to be non-negative. And so, it is not so easy to just substitute one in the other. If you substitute um, out you know solving for uh, alpha in terms of w, then you will have to add the additional clause that this thing should be taken as 0 whenever the alpha is are uh, negative, one of the alpha is, they are not all non-negative. But now, if you write it um, as a um, ratio of factors, you can write this as a product of a string of numbers. So, lambda i plus delta i times lambda i plus delta i minus 1 all the way down to lambda i plus delta i exactly plus 1. So, now this reminds me of the riddle in school you know what is a minus x times b minus x times c minus x all the way up to z minus x and the answer is 0. So, that is what is happening here if so this this last number is really just uh, alpha i plus 1 I have just used this uh, identity here that alpha is lambda i plus delta i minus delta w i. So, if alpha is negative then at least one of these terms will be 0 and this gives 0. So, now I no longer have to worry about the non-negativity of the alpha is and now I can just solve uh, for alpha in terms of w. So, um, so, in fact, I have eliminated the alpha is here um, and I can just remove this. And there is a product over i's, of course, yes. Or maybe we will just wait for the lights to come on so that. Hmm. Ah, there you go. So that is the, there is a product over i's here which I had forgotten to write earlier. And is that. Uh, Okay, so now I want to um, make this, bring this down to the van der Mond determinant. So here's what we'll do. Um, if you define f j of x to be the polynomial x times x minus one, you take j factors, so x minus j plus one. So that's a monic polynomial in x of degree j. And what we really have here is that uh, f lambda is equal to n factorial product lambda i plus delta i factorial sum over w in S n. And this thing looks like a determinant epsilon w and then we have um, product f delta w i of lambda i plus delta i right and i goes from 1 to n that is what we have and that is clearly a determinant right it is an alternating sum of something. So, what are the entries of that matrix? Is that so that is really uh, 
um, determinant of the matrix whose um, f n minus 1 x 1 f n minus 1 x 2 f n minus 1 x n f n minus 2 x 1 n minus 2 x 2 f n minus 2 x n all the way up to f 0 which is the constant 1. Where you evaluate this at um, x i equals lambda i plus um, delta i. So you just want to take this thing and evaluate it at x i equals lambda i plus delta i. But look at this, this is a, uh, this is constant 1, the next column is linear monic, second column is quadratic monic and so on. So you can easily reduce this to the van der Maan. what do you do? This is monic of degree n minus 1. So you can just subtract appropriate multiples of these later columns and make this x to the power n minus 1. So you column reduce is that clear to x1 to the n minus 1 x2 to the n minus 1 And then when you plug in um, x i to be lambda i plus delta i, you get precisely a delta of x 1 plus delta 1, x 2 plus delta 2, x n plus delta n. So that is just the Frobenius uh, dimension formula. The, the dimension of uh, uh, v lambda or the number of standard Young table of shape lambda is um, Oh, I should have a product, right? Uh, yeah, this should be lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. And uh, yeah, that is it. There is no product now because. Um, no, I need to substitute here. What I did was um, I had f of this thing lambda i plus delta i. So I just, uh, it is just psychologically easier to think of it as a polynomial in x. So I need to substitute uh, for x i lambda i plus delta i. So in here I need to substitute uh, for x i lambda i plus delta i. So this with the x is it just be the van der Maan determinant, but I am substituting in the van der Maan determinant lambda 1 plus delta 1, lambda 2 plus delta 2 and that is exactly what the Frobenius dimension formula said. So now we will just need to do one last thing which is see how to go from the Frobenius dimension formula to the uh, hook length formula. And that is a combinatorial, uh, that is a combinatorial property, uh, combinatorial uh, argument. So let me firstly tell you what are hook lengths and so on. Given a box in a Young diagram. In fact, I think you have given not only the formula for the position, but actually the whole formula, formula you expressed. I mean, I have mean only uh, given the coefficients of the strictly decreasing monomials in that polynomial. It is not clear what the other ones will be. Oh, um, but anyway, this is like at a specific value. so. Okay, so given a box in a Young diagram, you can talk about its hook length. Let me just draw a Young diagram for you. So uh, let's say so that has six boxes in the first row, five boxes in the second row, 
three boxes in the third row and three boxes in the fourth row. So this is the Young diagram for lambda equals 6, 5, 3, 3. Now this is a partition of uh, 17, right? So we want to use our usual convention of having as many parts as n, then you would have to append um, a bunch of uh, zeros at the end of this, 13 zeros. Okay, but let us not worry about that for the moment. They just, uh, so there is some 0, I mean anyway there will be 0 boxes here, the picture remains the same. Now what is the hook length of a box? So let us just take this box here. Its hook length is all the boxes um, which uh, I have indicated here. So all the boxes, uh, that box itself, all the boxes which are to its right and all the boxes which are below it, that is the hook length. So let me just fill out all these um, boxes with their hook lengths just to illustrate. So what is the hook length here? So th there is 6 over here and then this partition has 4 non-zero parts. So it is 6 plus 4 but I am counting this twice. So it is 6 plus 4 minus 1. So that is like um, lambda 1 plus. So suppose I write lambda now to be lambda 1 lambda L where lambda L is greater than 0 then it is lambda 1 plus L minus 1. So anyway here I get 6 plus 4 minus 1, so that is 9. Now if I go from here to here, um, I only lose, uh, this arm becomes shorter but this remains the same. So it only goes down by 1 and when I go from here to here it goes down by 1. But now there is a jump because this vertical arm has also become shorter. The horizontal arm always reduces by length 1, but now the vertical arm has become shorter. And how much shorter has it become? By 2. So the numbers 6 and 5 get skipped. Otherwise, this is pretty much going like a factorial. And now I get, so 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 are skipped. I get 4. Then here there is no this thing, 3. And then 2 gets skipped for this missing box and I get 1. Okay. Let us do it with the second row. So here it is almost as if I am just starting afresh. I just look at this 5, 3, 3. So it would start off with uh, lambda 2 plus L minus 2 and then there will be some missed numbers. So um, anyway, so this will be 7. I am going to take a partiality to rows over columns, I am going to do it along rows. You could have done it along columns. So, so I am not going to say that this 7 is 9 with 8 in between skip because there is one box. I will just do it along rows. So, so that is lambda 2 plus L minus 2, that is 7. Here there is no skip, so I get 6. Here I get 5. Now here there is a skip by 2, so 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then here it is, uh, well, okay, so now 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 2, 1. Those are the hook lengths. So what is the skipping business? So what we are saying is that uh, the, um, the, if I take compute the product of the hook lengths, it is like a product of these factorials, but there are some numbers which are skipped. So I need to divide by them. So, um, so product of hook lengths equals product over i of lambda i plus L minus i factorial um, And then I need to divide by all the missing guys. Now uh, notice that um, the missing, uh, the skip things, each skip thing corresponds to a um, row that is uh, a row in this diagram. See here this, um, uh, there were two numbers skipped going from 7 to 4. That is because I took two rows ended at that um, column. And here there is, uh, one number skipped because one row ended at this column. So for each row there is a number that is skipped and you need to figure out what is that number that is getting skipped for each row. Okay. And for this it is all the rows that are subsequent that come below this row. 
for this the skippings are because of rows which come after it so it's like so it's like a product over um, i strictly less than j so for each row subsequent to the row in which you're writing the hook lengths numbers get skipped and what is the number that gets skipped um, it is um, so you are starting with um, so you need to just think this through a bit um, so you are starting with lambda l plus l minus uh, 1 but uh, if you are in the i row, you are starting with lambda l plus l minus i minus 1 and uh, what matters is sort of the relative uh, the difference of uh, lambda um, lambda l plus l minus i lambda l plus l minus j so for the uh, if i'm writing down the hook lengths in the i row, the number that is skipped because of the j row, which lies below i is precisely this difference lambda l plus l minus i minus lambda l plus l minus j. Let us just look at the first row here okay? and for subsequent rows it is the same thing you just uh, um, uh, you know because you, you, you can pretend you are starting off with a partition with fewer rows. So it is enough to really understand the first row. So you are starting off with lambda l plus l minus 1 and then we are going to see the number skip relative to that. So, so, so you are starting with lambda, so for the first row you would have lambda l plus l minus 1 and then you keep going down lambda l plus l minus 1, lambda l plus l minus 2, lambda l plus l minus 3, lambda l plus um, l minus 4 gets skipped because this row has ended. Oh, um, this is not lambda L, this is lambda I and this is lambda J. Okay, so you are starting with lambda L plus L minus 1 and the number that gets skipped here, the first number that gets skipped here is um, lambda 4 plus L minus 4 because lambda 4 is uh, 3 okay, and then the next number also gets skipped lambda 3 which is also 3 plus L minus 5 so those two numbers get skipped so these are the numbers which get skipped which come in the denominator and these are the factorials now look at this um, this is a Vandermont determinant right here this is just equal to uh, sorry this is just equal to this this denominator here is just uh, this Vandermont determinant because it is the product over i less than j x i minus x j where for x i is substitute lambda i plus l minus i yeah lambda i minus uh, so you could put I want to actually put n so there's there's actually still more discrepancy I can put n here um, so I um, also want to say that suppose I now suppose instead of uh, I had a zero this thing here then I would start with um, I would notionally I would try to you know have uh, um, uh, I would like to put 10 here but the 10 gets skipped itself so there's some skipping right at the beginning so you start off with lambda i plus n minus i but then you skip the first few numbers till you come to the first non-zero row. So what I want to say here is that it does not really matter I can introduce more zeros at the end of my young tableau and change these l's to n's in fact. 
you can change this to an n you can change this also to an n. So, it is it's the same thing because of the skipping right in the beginning before even you start you know when you write down your very first hook length and this really is this van der Mond determinant this denominator here. So, now if you just compare this product of the hook lengths with the Frobenius uh, dimension formula which I will um, just write down up here to remind you. we had um, n factorial over product of these things a delta lambda 1 plus delta 1 lambda 2 plus then you get um, just using this um, this over this is the product of the hook lengths. So, you get this beautiful formula n factorial times product over the hook length. So, for each um, i j will denote a, the coordinates of a box in the Young diagram which is in the i th row and j th column count you know h i j and that is the hook length formula. The number of standard Young tableau of shape lambda is n factorial divided by the product of the hook lengths in the standard Young tableau of shape lambda. That is it. Finished.